Hi right, guys, Darren here again. Um, today, what I'm going to do is go over my intake leak fix that you guys are fixing to see. If you guys own an RX-8 and aren't on the purely RX-8 Facebook page, I recommend it because um, two guys that own T-Rex, Justin Hesselrode and David Simpson, very good guys, they'll pretty much answer you almost immediately. Um, so I'll show you guys where my intake leak was. There used to be a rather large bit of space between the upper intake manifold and lower intake manifold and these gaskets were actually perfectly fine to uh, to my surprise, which is a good thing. Not a bad thing, good thing. Very, very good thing. Um, so, as you can see, that's not going anywhere. There's not really any gap in between there now, you know, so um, all is well. Went for a drive in her this morning, so she's she's warm right now. Um, the only reason I have a check engine light now is because of the gutted cat, which I will be replacing soon just to, you know, make sure I'm getting the, um, the check engine light to go away. And uh, so I don't know if I ever showed you guys this before. The, um, oh, that's hot. Hot, hot, hot bar hot bar um this bolt right there was totally missing from my upper intake manifold whatsoever wasn't even there um message david uh not david uh justin and he sent me three of them and so i put one of them in because the other one broke and it actually sheared off uh, the, the previous owner, I guess, because you can tell that this upper intake manifold is from like a, um, a salvage yard, like a, a junkyard or something like that, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because it seems to be in, in pretty good shape. Um, you can tell the car's been in an accident before this front bumper is so flimsy it is kind of you know and there's this huge gap right here I really don't like that but I'll just deal with it because the car's running fine so I'm not worried about it um, first get the car running right and then do um, changes to the uh, exterior of the car and performance modifications other than reliability modifications themselves which is what this car is going to be going through because I have some big news for you guys I might might grab a 1988 Mazda RX-7 so stay in tune with the channel if you want to figure out exactly what's going on. Either way, I'm looking for a project car, so I will be getting a project car. What it will be, I'm hoping I can find a good RX-7 around here that is in, you know, at least decent shape that I can, I can use. Sorry, I, this is bugging me. Um, come on, work. So, yeah. There will be a future project car. This, I'm not going to do very much with this because this is a high compression motor already. So it's going to be really hard to get a lot of power out of it without damaging the internals of the car. Um, she just recently had an oil change about, I mean, less than 100 miles ago. I just did an oil change on her. So, yeah, basically I had to drill that the uh, remainder 
of the screw out of the lower intake manifold and get a screw extractor and extract the screw out of it. That was a pain in the ass. But only took me about an hour and a half to do that and put it all back together. I literally, I woke up at uh, 9 o'clock and I had to be at work at 11. And by the time I was done, I still had time to go take a shower and go to work. So, yeah. Now, the main reason I wanted to do today's video is to show you guys how to remove the faceplate or figure out what's wrong with your faceplate if you're having issues. Gorgeous model homes. It's too much fun and too so if you're um, if your faceplate is not making a good connection with the radio behind it you will not get any kind of display up here or you shouldn't or it might be you know very faint um, you know you might get a couple lines across the screen or something like that it all has to do with this not being connected there's a there's a connection here and a connection here behind the faceplate, and there's three screws on either side, or there might just be two on this side and three on this side. I know for sure there's three on this side. Um, anyways, it's really easy to remove, very simple. Um, the only thing you have to look out for is there is a screw up in here back there you're gonna have to take this plastic piece off to get to it whenever you guys go to take out your radio um i just took mine totally out because it seems to not do anything at all the radio screws in here so i just took that because it's, it's called the invisible screw you guys can see it on the um on the rx8 club forums it'll be there so um yeah, and I'm having an issue with my sat nav right now that, you know, will be fixed. It basically, it'll open by itself. Even even if I just turn the car on, it'll open by itself. It won't tilt, and it won't close itself. But, watch this. Whenever I turn the car off, it closes by itself. Now... Whether that's unicorns and fairy dust and the Dorito speaking, I have no clue. But uh, I'm hoping something, you know, the wiring is just bad or something like that. Because that'll be uh, a fairly easy fix and cheap one. It'll just be time consuming. Um, but if it's the screen, that's going to be a pretty expensive fix. I may just go ahead and upgrade to the tablet being here. You know, the um, T-Rex makes it. And it's a whole entire navigation system that uses a Nexus 7 tablet. Um, so check that out if you guys are interested in doing something like that. Anyhow, let's get on with uh, how to do this. So without that screw in there that I told you guys about earlier, um, put the car in neutral or drive or whatever. Pull your e-brake. I'm sitting on flat ground. My car is not going to roll. But... Uh, just pull the e-brake because it also makes it easier to take this off. Take your shift knob off. Should just twist off like that. I'm not gonna slide my radio out and show you guys. I'm just gonna take this off and uh, see if I can get this to stay up here. I got a bunch of junk in my cup holder right now. Basically, this piece right here will pop up. And then you can slide this off. And you can see there's a bunch of wires connected there, so don't jerk it off or anything like that. Just be gentle with it. Um, you take these two screws out. And this whole unit will just pop out, just pull it and be gentle with it. There are two connections back there, but they are long enough that you can just pull it out and set it to the side. And then there will be two outer screws 
and two inner screws where the radio actually screws on. Um, take out the two inner screws and then the, the invisible bolt that's over here and you can pull this whole entire head unit and radio out and you can see the faceplate on the back where there's there's like a screw here, a screw here, and a screw down at bottom here. And then there's a screw here and a screw here on this side. I know for sure whether there's one in the bottom. I'm not entirely sure, but it's self-explanatory once you take it apart. Um, just be careful because the reason that my faceplate got damaged was because I didn't take out that invisible screw and ripped the faceplate completely off of the, um, the radio itself. So be careful whenever doing that. Find that invisible screw and take it off. There are some pretty good pictures of it on, on RX-8 Club. It's hard to get it on video, and I don't really feel like taking all of this apart again, um, to be completely and totally, utterly honest about it. So, um, but yeah, take this out. There should be some screws behind it. And uh, if those screws are not all the way tightened in, or there's, there's little brass pins, the pins that the screws screw into, if they are totally missing or they're stripped out, then it will, it, it's going to, it's going to mess up your connection behind the radio in these two connection ports that are behind here that I was talking about earlier. So, um, but anyways, guys, yeah, it's really self-explanatory, really easy. I would not. I would not be scared to do it. So, um, yeah, you know, I've still got like three minutes left to, uh, to show you guys some stuff. So, because I don't technically have a professional YouTube, you see this, this just all pops back in. So I was held in by little clips. You put your shift knob back on. Until it gets nice and tight. Put it back in part. My thing is broken. So don't worry about that. But, uh, so you guys want to see a hot start? There we go. It's a beautiful hot start with the old starter, a battery that can probably be weak, and it's pretty cool outside, actually. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and she pops. But yeah, she's got brand new spark plugs, brand new coils, a new oil change. I'm running a 93 octane fuel. Um, I average about 16 miles per gallon with the cat gutted, but the fixing of the intake leak really helped a whole lot. Like, I went from barely getting, you know, 170, 180 miles out of a tank to getting 220, 230 out of it. So if you guys have an intake leak or a vacuum leak or anything like that that's causing a check engine light, causing your car to run rich, fix it. It will pay off in the long run. But yeah. So, she runs fantastic. And my radio works. Take a break from your car payments, will you? So... The only thing I gotta figure out now is that my GPS thing not working. Just yeah, make sure you I cannot stress that enough. Find that invisible screw. Go to rx8club.com and find it. It's not that hard to find, it's just in a really tucked up space. You can get to it with a regular socket. You might need an extension. Um but yeah. Everything runs fine. AC works. Hey guys, see you later.